Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santanetti. And on today's message, we're still looking into the blessing of the sign, the blessing of circumcision. And this is the Old Testament, but we know that circumcision is throughout the old and the new. And the one that circumcises the new believer is the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, we're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 11 down through 14. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token, speaking to Abraham, of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every male child in your generation. He that is born in the house or brought with money, or any stranger which is not of your seed. He that is born in thy house, and he that is brought with uh, your money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child, whose flesh is of the foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. I think one of the first things to understand is that the sign of the promise is that God would speak his word into Abraham to cut him in his heart. And the sign of that cut in his heart will be manifested in the cut of his flesh. And as Christians, we know that the Spirit of God comes into our hearts. When Christ comes into our lives, he sends his Spirit into our hearts. And watch this, we received it because we heard the gospel. Remember, you cannot come to Christ until you first hear the gospel in your ear, in your heart, in your mind. No, no matter how God does it, you have to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus came to, uh, to die for our sins and resurrect. And so we know that because of this, we can accept him because we're drawn by grace the Father draws us by grace. And, and watch this. The Bible tells us that we were dead in our transgressions. That means that we were dead on a different path. We were walking on a different path because the word way is Derek, where we get actually the English name Derek. And it means the way. And so when Jesus said that he was the, the, the Derek, he was saying, I am the journey that leads to God for an everlasting life. Now, I told someone a long time ago, I said, every path leads to God, but not every path is going to lead to God to be with God because there's only one way, and that's the path of Jesus Christ. Every other path will wind up eventually to the throne of God, but it won't be the throne of the judgment seat of Christ. It'll be the throne of judgment to be thrown into the lake of fire. And a lot of people don't like to say that anymore, but Jesus said it. And I will keep repeating what Jesus says to the day I die, God willing. Hallelujah. Well, we know that this promise of the sign is circumcision in the flesh because God told Abraham to circumcise his foreskin because something happened. And I'm going to go back a little bit in chapter 16. Um, we know that his wife Sarai could not have children and so she put a plan together to to allow Hagar her maidservant to go with her husband and have a child through her and that child would be born on her knees and that's the way they did it in those days and so when the child was born Ishmael what's interesting is that Ishmael was uh, the, the 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 son of Hagar and Hagar didn't want to give it up and so there was a lot of things going around between Hagar and Sarai. But then the Lord had already promised Abraham that he would have a child of his, of, of, from his own loins. And here, what's interesting is that in chapter 17, we see the fulfillment of God promising him that child because he would come out of circumcision. Ishmael was birthed out of circumcision, meaning he was not... Uh, uh, Abraham was not circumcised, so Ishmael was born out of no circumcision, okay? But Isaac was born within the covenant of circumcision. Ishmael was not born in the covenant of circumcision, and therefore that line would not be blessed as Isaac would be blessed. And I know a lot of people will fight with that. What are you saying? I said what I just said. 
In the Bible, the covenant of circumcision is for God's people. You have two people in this world. Do you know that? Those who are uncircumcised and those who are circumcised. Those who are uncircumcised do not have Christ living in their hearts. The Holy Spirit is not there. And you say, wait a minute, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Yes, but he is not dwelling in these people who are unsaved. Remember that. When you speak to a person who's unsaved, the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in that body. But when you receive Jesus Christ because God the Father drew you to him, remember, we were dead. And the Bible says that God brought us to Christ and he gave us life and thus the Holy Spirit circumcised our heart. But watch this. Circumcised in the heart is one thing. Being circumcised in the flesh is another. Now, can a Christian be circumcised in the flesh? Absolutely. You may say, wait a minute. Circumcision is Old Testament. A man doesn't need to be circumcised in the New Testament. I didn't talk about physical circumcision like that. I said physical circumcision can and must be done in the Christian. Why? Because it represents the cutting off of the flesh. And that means that we can't, uh, can't uh, be Christians and still live the old life. It has to be cut off. That also is a circumcision. But Jesus said, unless you carry that cross every day and die, there's no life. So here, he says, every person who is not circumcised will be cut off. And that's the problem. He says, your whole house must do it. Now, I'm going to go back and we're going to bring in the word again, uth, which is the word sign or token. Sign or token. Now, you see here in the screen that there are three letters that we talked about yesterday. And again, I want to emphasize that uh, some people teach the Hebrew letters as some magical, uh, you know, potion or some amulets that you can just call on and something magical will happen. That's not what this is all about. When we study the letters, whether it be Greek or Hebrew letters, we study it to understand more the words within the context of Scripture. And it helps us to get a more deeper meaning. And so here, the word uth is interesting because it takes us back to Genesis chapter 4, and you can look at it, verse 11. When Cain had killed his brother, he had to leave the presence of God in the sense in the mountain of those people, the mountain of his holiness at that point where Adam had established his people. He could not live there anymore. And there were people also on the earth, but he had to leave. He knew that coming, getting out of that place that he would become like a, a vagabond, that he would become like a, a wild man in the streets. And he said, anyone who sees me is going to kill me. And the Lord said, that's not going to happen. Just in plain English. He says, I'm going to put a mark on him. And God put a mark on him. And the mark, see, a lot of people have said, I myself, when I didn't understand the scriptures in the Hebrew, and I didn't, and I didn't look, so, you know, I heard people say, nobody knows what that mark is. Well, I want to debunk that today and let you know we know what the mark is. It's uth. Those three letters, uth, was put on his forehead. And by the way, who wrote the first, who was the first one to write in the Bible? God. This is the first writing of God. The first is in Genesis. Like the first operation was God when he opened up Adam's flesh and took out his, his wife. Well, here is the first time we see God writing physically upon somebody. Wow, isn't that interesting? I love it. And the first word that he writes, oof. The sign. Whoever sees this is not going to kill you because they're going to know that you belong to me. And you know what? I'm going to say something that I believe is so true. Otherwise, I wouldn't say it. How do the angels know? I mean, they're supposed to come and they're going to take us off the earth. The Bible says that the, that the harvest, remember? The wheat, the, the wheat and the tares, were, were, you know, they grew up together. In the church, you got the wheat and the tares, but God knows those who are his. And I believe, the Bible says that we were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when we heard the gospel of our salvation. I believe it is the oath. I believe it is the sign that these are the circumcised of, of my family. Love it. And if you want to study that, go ahead, because we are sealed. And it is a seal. 
Now, when you look at the word oof, you see there are three letters. The first letter that we see on the screen, it would be to your right, is the Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The middle letter is the Vav, and the last letter is the Tav, or the Tau. Now, what does it mean? What was interesting is that the first and the last letter represents the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Christ is the left top. And I want to let you know something, that those two letters, I have looked in Scripture over 11,000 times between the Old and the New Testament is in the book. And this is what is interesting, that the left top, the, the left, the first and the last letter, is sprinkled throughout the entire Bible because he is the beginning and the end. But the middle letter, the Vav, is so interesting if you look at the Aleph, you see that there's one little letter on top, the first letter, that is the Yud, and then on the bottom there's another Yud, and then in between there is that line. Do you know that's the sixth letter? <laughs> that's the sixth letter. So the Aleph is made of two letters. It's made of the Yud, the tenth letter, is made of the Vav, the sixth letter, and it represents the name of Yahweh. Wow, my wife's going to put that on the screen because she helps me out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Woo. So you can see it, she said. She wants you to see it. The Aleph. So we see that the first letter, again, going back on your right, is the Aleph, the first letter, and it represents Yahweh. I'm going to tell you why. Again, you see the Yud on the top of the left and in the bottom. Notice that the, the, it's designed that way to show us something, to teach us, that the Yud points up, the top one, because it's God. And the bottom one points to um, uh, the other way. It looks like a foot because we walk with God. But watch this. Without that middle letter, the Vav, in between that the Yud touches, the top Yud touches it and the bottom Yud touches it, it represents wholeness. Faith, trust in God. That's how God, that's how God and man are united because that valve represents a nail and that nail, the nails that Jesus took on the cross, makes us whole. I get excited about that. Wow. You can see it. So, oof. He told Abraham, circumcise your foreskin. Watch this. The circumcision, he says, this will be the sign Another word is the token, and another word is the monument. And I told you that the last letter, the tav, the picture of the last letter, represents a cross. And that's the monument of the Christian faith, the cross. So the aleph, the first one, represents an ox. An ox is strong, powerful, represents the leader. It represents God as the only strong and mighty one. The middle one represents the vav. Which, which, which represents a nail or nails, and then the last letter represents the cross. So all together, when you put it, you have the ox that was crucified on the cross. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is John when he says that, watch this, and the Word became flesh. Who is the Word? Well, he said in the first verse, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus is the perfect Son of Man, according to Luke, the white gospel, hallelujah. He, he introduces Jesus as the perfect man, no sin. And it took a man with no sin to die for people who have sinned. And so watch this. This circumcision that he tells Abraham was Watch this, was not only a type, but it was to actual, to actual, in actuality to bless the people of Israel. Everyone from this point, all the Jews had to, all the males, had to be circumcised. Now, watch this now. Can a person, a believer, walk in the flesh and still be saved? Well, the fact is this. If you're a Christian then that means you're saved. And we're, I'm going to show you something. In Romans, it says this, in Romans. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that he, we shall also live with him. 
That's because he's keeping us. Watch this now. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died once to sin, but in that he lives, he lives unto God. Watch this now. Look what Paul's saying here. Likewise, reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ the Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. So understand, just as Christ died once and resurrected, he cannot die again. Those who are resurrected with him, not, if you say that you're not resurrected with him, then you're not saved. And we do believe that I died, I died with Christ. Did you die with Christ? We died with him. But he also, watch this, because he was raised back to life, we also are spiritually right now raised to life. We are in the resurrection power because Christ has circumcised our lives through his death in our hearts. But the physical circumcision still has to take place. I'm not talking about the foreskin of a man. I'm talking about the sanctified life of the believer is to be cut off from the things of this world. We can't keep walking in the things of the flesh thinking that we're pleasing God. It doesn't work. But yet we are Christians. Yet we cannot die again. Now watch this. If a person says, well, yeah, you know, I mean, you can die and you can lose your salvation. How insidious is this? Watch this now. Because if you lose your salvation, as people say, how can you get back to the other side? Don't tell me it's only by repentance. You need to be born again. You need to be raised up again. That can't happen twice. Jesus died once. He resurrected. We die once with him. We resurrect. But we must put to death the things of the flesh. Now, God, did you know that God met Moses to kill him? Got to finish this, because we're going to finish this today. God met Moses to kill him. You say, excuse me? Yeah, Moses, the one that went before the burning bush, and he spoke to God, and God spoke to him, and God says, I want you to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And when all that was over, Moses packs up, and he starts his journey into Egypt. But watch this. It says in, in Exodus 4, 24 down to 26, and it came to pass, by the way, in the end, so maybe he stopped somewhere. That the Lord met him to sort, to kill him. What? Why? Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at the feet of Moses and said, Surely you are a bloody husband, art thou? You are a bloody husband. Now watch this. So he let him go. Then he said, a bloody husband you are because of circumcision. Moses was going to go down to Pharaoh. Watch this. He had the staff in his hand that God transformed. And he was on his way to go down to Pharaoh and say, let my people go, God says. God says, not without circumcision, you ain't going to do it. Because this is a covenant, and if you think you're going to make it, it's not going to happen. And God was, listen, how serious it was for that covenant to be broken, that he did not, he did not circumcise his son. One of his sons, he did not circumcise him. And a lot of people think that Zipporah had a lot to do with that. That maybe she convinced him not to do it. And so they were on their way, and on the way, God was going to kill Moses. You're not going to do what? I'm going to kill you. That's why Zipporah, she knew what was going on, okay? How did she know that? Because she knew that the Lord was coming to kill Moses because of, of, of uncircumcision to, her, to his son. Now watch this. She takes a knife and she circumcises the child. She throws the foreskin at his feet. She puts it at his feet. Here, you're a, you're a husband of, of blood because of the circumcision. And she understood one thing, that this calling of circumcision, this is where your power is. Hello? For the new believer, where is our power? It's that, watch this, we are saved. But watch this now. You got to live a sanctified and holy life for the power of God to flow out of you so that he can do things through you. So that, listen, he wants to sign the oof of your life to be seen as holy. It's kind of hard for you to be on the, on, the, on the corner or on the pulpit preaching 
and then they see you going on a bar coming out drunk. It doesn't work. Something's got to give. Something is going to be cut. Okay? I used to be an alcoholic and a drug addict to the bone. I did everything to, to fulfill my desire for drugs and alcoholism. I'm telling you. And you know what? When Christ came into my life, he, listen, he sanctified me. I had to let all that go. I could not live in that and still serve him. Yet I was saved. But the, but the, but the process of circumcision, cutting off the flesh little by little, and it hurts because sometimes the Lord tells you to give this thing up, which you really like a lot. It hurts. So he took it. One more. The new generation of Joshua. They just came out of Egypt, right? And something happened. God takes them to the point, the very brink of the brim of the promised land that he promised them, Canaan. And he sends Moses, sends 12 spies. And 10 come back. And they tell the people, we're not going to be able to do this. They're giants there. They're strong. We're like little ants, grasshoppers to them. But two of them, Joshua and Caleb, said, we can do this. Let's do it. And because of the negative evil report, the Bible says, the people, watch this. If there was almost 2 million people, can you imagine that the report of these 10 men spread like a canker worm through the entire camp and put fear in the hearts of people? And yet they were circumcised. But fear of the enemy did not allow them to go into God's best. So God said, okay, because of this, because you believe this evil report, you're going to stay in the desert. And for 40 years, they wandered in the desert until that generation died off. But they had children. And you know what they did? Instead of learning the lesson and saying, we messed up. We believe the evil report. We should have believed Joshua and Caleb. By the way, Joshua came from the tribe of Ephraim, which means fruitful. And Caleb was from the tribe of Judah, the fruit of Judah, which is Christ in the picture. Watch this now. Because we believe the ten spies... We, we didn't go in, but every child must still be circumcised because of the covenant given to Abraham. They did not circumcise their children. Watch what God says now. I'm just going to go right here to Joshua chapter 5 because I got to finish this. So please hang in there. Joshua chapter 5 verse 1 says, And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of the Jordan, the other side, the westward, and all the kings of the, Canaan, the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan before the children of Israel, until we passed over that the, their hearts melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Now, how about you? If you heard that you had an army and you went to the brink of a city and you heard, hey, the city is afraid. They, they know that you're coming. You're going to take over. They are afraid. They, they, they're ready to run. You would have said, let's go in and do this. Come on. No. Look what God, look what God. The Lord says, at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Well, what do you mean second time? It wasn't a circumcision for the same people. No, what happened, they came to the, to the borderline of, of the promised land. They didn't go in because of unbelief. And you know, who, you know who the ones that were? It says the army. The army of males, they all died out. And God had to raise up new ones. But watch this. They were not circumcised. So he says, I'm going to give you the city, but you got to do something. You got to go back to Abraham because I said, anyone who is not circumcised will be cut off. And so what they did, watch this. He says, you got to circumcise them again. What do you mean? You circumcise. Watch this now. You circumcise your child, your son. Your son circumcises his son when he, and it goes on and on, so it's never broken. But if you have a son, you circumcise him, he has a son, and he doesn't circumcise him. When that son has a son, he needs to be circumcised for the second time, meaning it needs to loop over. You need to fix that. And it took, watch this, he, he must have, um, what they call, circumcised 600,000 men. 600,000 men, and maybe more. And there was pain in those men for at least three or four days. Now watch this. What's interesting about this is that while they were waiting, when he finished circumcising, God says something that is awesome. 
He says, this day I have rolled away the reproach from Israel. Hallelujah. Woo! See what happens when you and I begin to follow the Spirit and God begins to circumcise our life. We're already circumcised in the heart. We worship Jesus. But God says, I need to cut this off and cut this off and cut this off. Why? Because I cannot give you the victory that I have for you and take you to the place where I want you to be if you don't allow me to cut the flesh. Yeah. God has things for you. Say, God, how come I'm not getting it? He says, because you're not getting it. You have not cut it off yet. Oh, I'm going to stop here. This is... Whew. Wow. 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 Cut it off. If you don't cut it off, it'll cut you off. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to cut that in your life, which he said, I want this out of your life. There's things that he wants out of my life. And I know that I won't be able to get to that place until he circumcises that part of my life. So can a Christian be circumcised? Yes. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Lord, cut it. I want to be sanctified. And you want to know something? Else? A quick nugget before we leave. There are people sometimes they're born with circumcision. Do you know that? And you say, wait a minute. It can't be circumcised? Yes, they also must be circumcised. This is interesting. You're born in, you're born in the church. You were raised up in the church. You've been, you've, been sancti you've been sanctified according to, you know, your understanding and all this. And you grew up, I grew up in the church. But you still need to be sanctified. You still need to be circumcised. You know what they do with the person that, in other words, had, doesn't have a foreskin? They still cut at the place where the foreskin will be cut to draw a little blood, and that's circumcision. That's why he says, you are a bridegroom of blood. He says, I understand now that the circumcision that I had to do, this is where your sanctification and your power is. Oh, let me stop, man. We can go on with this. I know they're saying, go on. Man, let me tell you, listen, 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 because this is so important. Hallelujah. Abraham put his seed pipe where it shouldn't have belonged. In Hagar, and he gave birth to an Ishmael, a wild man. But when he got circumcised, he gave birth to Isaac, and Isaac became the, the progenitor of all of Israel, and all of Israel is blessed today, and they keep the circumcision to this day. Matter of fact, if this, you know the Sabbath, you don't work? If circumcision falls on the Sabbath, God says, it's okay circumcised them on the Sabbath. That's why Jesus, watch this, not only did he die, but he was resurrected on the Sabbath so that the blood that he shed on the cross would be justified in the resurrection. And that's why we who are resurrected with Christ, we cut off the flesh, everything that gets in the way of our trust with God. Listen, it could be a family member. It could be a job that is dirty. I remember a brother who was working. He used to get tickets. And one time he came to the store where I was from our church, and he gave one of his brothers a ticket from the store. And he said, I hate this job because I have to do something to make it up. He left that thing. He cut it. I don't know where your cut is today, but wherever it is, circumcise it. Notice, God says, you do it, right? He would have said, Abraham, come here, I'm going to circumcise you. He says, no, 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 this is the covenant. I want you to cut, I want you to do it. Mm. Why? Because you put your seed pipe in the wrong place in the first place. Now I want you to sanctify it because all the seed that's going to come out of that got to be holy. Mm. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful spirit-filled, circumcised day. But whatever you do, cut that thing off or it will cut you off. Oh, wait, wait, I'm not going to leave you. Wait, one more, one more, one quick one. Remember Goliath? When David saw Goliath, he came into the camp. Everyone was sitting around. They were afraid of this giant that came for 40 days to test him and came and stood in that valley and said, Israel! Is there not one man that can come out and fight again? And when David came to the camp, a little, little youth, to bring food to the brothers, when he heard this, you know what he said? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He looked at him, he says, this guy's not circumcised. David chopped off his head. You got to chop off the head of that thing, cut it, cut it, bring it down. 
Because God wants to give you the head of your enemies. And I'm not talking about physically. Watch it. He had one stone. He put five in the pouch, but he said, <laughs> all I need is one. The other four, what were the four? He says, because I know you got four brothers who are big as you, and I got four more just in case they come. <laughs> you got God bless you. Have a wonderful day.